So your notes for centers of triangles will be written on this handout. And so you should have received this last class. We're just going to be filling in on this handout. And I'll be filling it in with you guys as you go. So we have different centers of triangles. We have them listed at the top. We have the circumcenter, the incenter, the centroid, and the orthocenter. And basically, each of these centers is formed by different parts, different lines um, created in the triangle that meet at a point, and then they have that specific name. So we're going to go through each one. The circumcenter is created by the perpendicular bisectors. So remember that a perpendicular bisector cuts a segment in half, and then it's also, you know, bisect cuts in half. And then it's also perpendicular. So our perpendicular bisectors that we're looking at are these three segments in the middle. You notice that on each side, they cut that segment in half, and we do have the two congruent marks to show that it is um, cutting it in half. So like the um, perpendicular bisector MY is cutting BC in half. Um, same with XM, it's cutting AB in half, it's also perpendicular, and then MZ is cutting AC in half. So some important facts are that the circumcenter is equidistant from each vertex of the triangle. So the circumcenter is our point M in the middle, and it is um, equidistant, meaning equal distance, if you don't know, that equidistant means equal distance. Let's write that in. So equidistant, equal distance from each vertex of the triangle. So that means that if we draw a line to each vertex of the triangle, which has been done here, so from like A to M, from C to M, and from B to M, that is a line drawn from the vertex to the circumcenter. So we're saying that all of those lengths are the same or that they're all the same distance. So we are saying that segment AM is equal to segment BM and that is also equal to segment CM. So all of those are the same. And we are going to verify some of these in class with constructions on the GeoGebra software. So you can see like how this actually happened and you know how this works out every time no matter what triangle you create. But um, it does. Triangles are pretty cool. <laughs> so the next center that we're going to talk about is the in center. And the in so the circumcenter was formed by the perpendicular bisectors where all three of them intersected. And now the in-center is formed by the angle bisectors, where all three of those intersect. And so our angle bisectors are these lines like BM, um, CM, and AM. Those are our angle bisectors. We have marked that, um, you know, AM is cutting angle A in half, um, CM is cutting angle C in half, and BM is cutting angle B in half. And we have that with our angle marks. And then our important fact is that the in center is equidistant from each side of the triangle. So we're kind of like switching a little bit. Um, now we're saying that if we just go straight from the in center to the side of the triangle, so when we go straight, when we go a direct distance, it's going to be perpendicular. And that's why we have our right angle right here. And we're saying that all of those distances are the same. So if I go from the in-center straight to side AC, that's my um, perpendicular line MZ. And if I go from the in-center straight to side AB, that's going to be my perpendicular line MX. So we're saying that all three of these segments are the same length. So XM is equal to YM, which is equal to CM. Each of their lengths will be the same. Now it's a lot to remember, but you know, we do have this organizer to help us, so um, let's just keep going. Next we have the centroid. 
The centroid is created by the medians, and we're going to talk about what a median is. A median is created by a vertex connected to the midpoint of the opposite side. So first, I have my centroid in the middle. Oops. I have my centroid in the middle. It's where all of my medians meet. Well, to create a median, we need to go from the vertex. So like say I'm going from vertex B. Oops. Vertex B. And then I'm going to connect that vertex to the median of the opposite side. So the median of the opposite side would be like this point Z. So if I connect B to Z, that's my median. So my medians are um, BZ, uh, CX, going from the vertex C all the way to the midpoint X, and then AY, going from the vertex A all the way to the midpoint Y. So those are our three medians, and they converge in the center called the centroid. So this one seems like I'm going to say a lot of the same things, but basically if you look at one median, um, and we're going to use AY, so if we look at one median, like AY, where the centroid is located actually cuts that segment into um, a certain fraction. So if I look at AM, I know that's going to be two-thirds of the whole way across AY. So if I'm looking at AM, that's going to be two-thirds across to the whole segment AY. So from A to M, this is two-thirds. And then from M to Y, that's one-third. So making the whole you know, two-thirds plus one-third is three-thirds, so making the whole segment. So the one that looks longer is going to be two-thirds, and then the shorter side is going to be the other third. Um, I'm just going to write a couple different ways this relationship, but I'm using that same thing. So now we could say that MY is one-third AY. So that's what I've already put up here. AY is the whole median, and MY is going to be just a third of it and we said that AY was two-thirds of it, or AM, sorry. Um, the other thing is that if AM is two-thirds and MY is one-third, well then MY times two will be AM. So if we could double MY, if we knew that length, we could find the length of AM because we have two-thirds and one-third literally doubled on that longer side. And then finally, we have MY, the small side, is half of AM. Well, I mean, we could say if we take one-third and take half of it. Oops, I'm going the wrong way. Sorry. If I take two-thirds and then take half of it, and I'm just going to multiply these together, I would get 2 over 6 which simplifies to one-third. So I literally, no matter what the length is, I know that MY is going to be half of AM because AM is two-thirds and MY is one-third. If I'm confusing you with the fractions, when we get an example in class with actual numbers, I think it'll be more clear. But basically we have along this one median, the longer side is two-thirds of it, the shorter side is one-third of it, and it's being broken apart by the centroid. Okay, so our last center is called the orthocenter, and the orthocenter is created by altitudes. And we're going to talk about what an altitude is, but an altitude is also known as the height of a triangle. And if you remember from middle school, a height of a triangle has to be perpendicular. Like, we just don't take a side, like, we don't just take that side of the triangle and consider that the height because it's slanted. We always go from the ground straight up to do a height. So 
height needs or an altitude or height needs to be perpendicular. And I'm going to actually write in here that altitude is also a height of a triangle. Um, when we get into surface area and volume and area, you're going to be needing the height, like um, the triangle is one half base times height. Well, the height we're talking about is the altitude. But for our important facts, an altitude is created by a vertex connected to the opposite side so that it is perpendicular. So I go from um, a vertex, say B, I go straight to the other side and make that perpendicular. So BZ would be one of my heights. Um, another one of my heights would be AY. So we have BZ as one of the heights or altitudes. We have a Y just going from A straight perpendicular. Doesn't mean it's a perpendicular bisector. Obviously, if we look at side AC, Z is not directly in the middle of it. It's just going straight down perpendicular. Doesn't mean it's gonna bisect or anything. And then CY is another height. So if you could think about like keep turning your paper, so that's so the so another side is the base, like right now. AC is at the bottom, but if you turn your paper and make AB at the bottom, then XC should be, you know, going straight from the ground up. Or if we switch our paper and have BC be at the bottom, then the height or the altitude should be AY going straight up. So that's going to be it for this foldable. We are going to practice, you know, kind of solidify these properties in class and then we're going to apply them and do some construction. So make sure you have listened to everything um, and be prepared for the quiz. See you in class.